Today I am going to be demonstrating a mixed media with watercolor pencils and water soluble graphite and giving you a quick, I guess, state of the studio update on how my studio is set up. I've had a few of you ask for a tour of the studio. I figured this might be kind of a fun time to show you because I'm gonna be making some pretty cool changes. I ordered a TV stand of all things, which is weird, but I think it's gonna fit perfect in a space. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what it looks like now and then maybe next week, update you on what changes I've made. That doesn't make sense, I should wait. I'm not going to though. Here we go. So here is the bay window or the plant window really. Some of my plants are missing because I did put them outside to, so that they could enjoy nice warm weather and sun and by nice warm weather i mean it's over 100 degrees it's actually kind of miserable out right now there are the plants my plant stand this is the dresser where i store the majority of my paints and art supplies and of course more plants got some paintings on the wall there and this stand or shelving unit is just oh it makes me sad i cry a little inside it is a absolute hot mess i've got to figure out a better way to organize all this it's just yeah i kind of want an armoire uh, or something that i can close to make it not look like that next we have my workbench and that has my vivarium on it we will take a closer look over there in a moment. And then this is the area against that wall. There is the mural, I guess, if you want to call it a mural, that I painted a few months back. I never showed you guys. But I painted that. I wanted to somehow incorporate the color that the wall already was. I didn't want to paint all the walls this color. So I figured this would be kind of a good way to make it fade from the light, light gray the walls are into that dark teal. I don't know if I'll leave it that way. We'll see. For now, it works. And then that TV stand I was talking about, that's gonna go against this wall and it's got so much storage. Storage is kind of the thing I need in here right now. I have a hard time finding things. They're just, everything's just all over the place. There is my easel. And we'll go up closer so you can see the way I set up for recording. So there is a camera on a boom mic stand. This is a very heavy, heavy weight stand so that it doesn't tip when the camera is sitting on it. I've got the 27 inch computer monitor back there and that is hooked up to the laptop you see below. That is where I keep my reference photos. And then my easel where I'm obviously working. There is the laptop that I use for live streaming. And I use these TV trays where I hold the majority of my art supplies, whatever I'm currently, whatever medium I'm working on. I just drag them out to those little TV trays. I'd like to find something that's a bit more aesthetically pleasing. I just haven't found that yet. And of course, back to those bay windows. So there is the studio. Oh, and the frog. I didn't tell you, well, I sort of told you guys in a story recently. So here is my Bio Orb Vivarium. I will be doing a full video talking about the pros and cons of this setup. I love it, but there are definitely some things you wanna know about before you run out and buy one of these things. One of them being the fungus gnat issue. So one of my solutions has been to put a little, a tiny, tiny little thumbnail dart frog in there. So we'll see how that goes. He's really little, so you can't see him. I'll put a, a little pop-up of his photo on the screen here. But yeah, that is in the studio. He is adorable. I absolutely love him. And he's definitely made the bio orb even better. Before we get started on this demonstration, if you want to watch the two and a half hour version where I walk you through step-by-step step what I'm doing, you can head over to Patreon where for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two, sometimes three hour long lessons, in addition to over 200 that are already there. I will have a link in the video description. If you just wanna check out and see if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, I have a free colored pencil demonstration you can watch over on my Patreon library. Link is in the video description. Just for checking it out. Anytime that I'm going to work with water-soluble graphite, watercolor, or 
ink tense. My brain shut off and couldn't remember the name for some reason. I'm going to draw out my subject with a water soluble graphite pencil. That way, when I start to blend, it will completely blend in my lines. I don't end up with harsh graphite lines anywhere. So huge tip there. I love using the water soluble graphite for my initial line drawings. Now my background, my outside edge that is going to be black and white. I am just using my Faber-Castell water soluble graphite pencils for this. And this is kind of like working in an abstract. You're paying attention to where your lights and darks are and just copying the shapes. Because as I was working on that, it didn't feel like I was drawing coral. It was just very weird shapes. And that's going to really be true or a good tip for you, no matter what subject you're working on. When things start getting confusing and you're like, this doesn't look like coral or it doesn't really look like a flower. Don't look at it that way. Look at it as abstract shapes. Pay attention to your reference photo and copy what you see there. Now, in this case, I don't have to be exact to my reference photo, so that was no big deal, but it was a really good guideline. I'm using a Derwent water brush to blend everything out here. And all of the supplies that I'm using will be li listed in the video description. The water soluble graphite pencils come in a range of light to dark. So it makes it much, much easier to work with. You're not just stuck with one that you're trying to make light or dark. You've got a lot to go with there. And I let that dry completely, or actually I dried it with a hair dryer, So it pulled my paper back into shape. You can see I've got tape taping my paper down. That way when I dry it, it's going to dry back flat if it warps a bit because I did not pre-stretch this before I started painting. I'm going back over, darkening things up, and you can layer like this as many times as you want. If you use a lot of water, sometimes it will lift a little bit of the water soluble graphite, but not completely. So you can keep layering. And I would recommend start a bit on the light side and build up to dark, because if you go too dark, you're going to have a hard time, if it's even possible, depending on how dark you went, trying to lighten that back up. Now on to the watercolor pencils. For this one, I am using the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer, I can never say that right, watercolor pencils. And just for transparency, these were provided to me by them in trade for some work that I had, some video work I had done for them. So that is, you know, just so you guys are aware, I did not, well, sort of I bought them, it, it was a trade. So I'm starting with the background water and I'll have to go back through and darken that up quite a bit. And you can layer these, but you have to keep in mind it is watercolor. So depending on how you layer, don't use too much water and really scrub that brush in because you can start to lift your previous layers off. They will reactivate a bit, which is great for creating really smooth transitions. If you realize, wow, that line was too harsh and I need to soften it out. You can go back and fix that in most cases, but it is something that you want to be aware of so that you're not lifting more color off the paper than you intended. Now I'm not saying you're going to get it back, the paper back to white. So you also want to be careful that you're not making somewhere really dark that you wanted that true white of the paper to show through because it will lighten it if you add a bunch of water and scrub your brush over it, but it won't bring it back to white. Now I want to make sure that my coral, the lines here match up with the graphite lines. And that may seem like, well, obviously you would do that, except I wasn't when I was working on it. All of a sudden it hit me like, oh, these aren't lining up. I had to start paying a bit more attention. And then the water brush again. And I'm getting the hint of coral, not adding a ton of tiny, tiny detail. I want to be careful not to get this pencil on those fish because of that yellow and the orange. If I get, let's say blue or purple on them, it, you can't cover it that well. The blue or the oranges and the yellows are very, very translucent. So if I had blue where I didn't want it, that is going to show up. And when you're shading orange, huge, huge tip, don't jump to, or same thing with yellow, don't jump to black as your color for shading. On those ones, I used purple and magenta on the fish to add my shadows. And that's usually going to be my go-to for adding shadows on purple. I'm sorry, on orange or yellow. I'm usually going to use magentas and purples for my shadows. And now on to my sea turtle.
And I am using a reference photo and mostly copying what I see, but not exactly. I don't need every single line in here to be exact. I need the eye in the right location. I need my outline drawn correctly, but each of these little wrinkles, they don't need to be exact. No, don't be tempted to just randomly go through and make little cross hatch lines. That's not going to look right either. But I, with the reference photo, I'm not counting, you know, four lines going this way, five going the next direction. I'm looking at it though, for which direction that the lines go in, how thick or thin those lines should be. Those are the things that matter, but not having every single line exact. If you enjoy working that way, you certainly can. I don't think it adds anything to it if it's exact in that case, but I do want to be close and that's important. What is the saying? Sisters, not twins. Yeah, that is me and the reference photo. I'm also really hyping up my color saturation. My reference photo did not have all these colors. It's something that's really fun with painting marine life is pulling in more color. Hype up your color saturation. And I'll start with my basic lines and then go back through and clean everything up. Make things that need to be sharper. Clean those up a lot. Don't leave everything looking very fuzzy. It'll end up looking out of focus. So make sure where you need those clean, sharp edges that they are clean and sharp. It takes a bit more time, but it is definitely worth it. Now, when you're working with watercolor pencils or with water soluble graphite, you don't have to blend everything with water. If you do something, and I usually get that to this point towards the end of each piece, if it looks good how it is, you don't have to add water and blend. That's just not necessary. And here's another area. I really hyped up that color saturation. You don't have to use a water brush to blend these. You could use a, I used to use a round brush for almost everything. And that worked out really well too, a Taclon bristled round. With a water brush, they're handy because you don't have to keep dipping it back in your water well. It's, there's water in the handle. You just squeeze the back end of it a little bit and it releases more water. So it's good if you, like me, are very lazy. using dark indigo colors and purples for these deeper shadows. And like everything with every medium I work in, it's always a layering process. This is never a paint by number where you just put the right color in the right place. It has a tendency to come out looking very stiff. You don't get a natural transition from one color to the next. The layering just, it works really well for me using a white pencil here, the white watercolor pencil. And I know with watercolor, the traditional watercolor artists typically are anti using white because it's going to be more opaque. And with watercolor, you're building up translucency. So I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying I don't follow that. I, I'm a big fan of that white pencil. I'm okay with parts of this being op opaque. And I'm using mostly purples for my base there on these little sections on his fin. Now, and you may be tempted just to jump straight to black to make them really dark. It's going to look a bit flat. I'm going to save if I do use black, I use it for the very end, just little bits here and there. But my base, I'm starting with purple. And blending that out. And that's a combination of a peach color and then the purple mixing together. And don't overblend. That's another thing because this will sort of reactivate. You may be tempted to keep blending and blending and blending. And then you have one medium color. You don't have peach and purple. You have mud. So don't overblend. Just a little bit really is enough. Adding a light blue for the areas of the fin that are technically white. If he were out of the water, it would be nearly white. But as you know, if you've been following me very long, white is almost never white. You're going to keep bright white white for your highlights. You want to have whatever the colors in the background should be reflecting on the areas that are white. And so in this case, he's got he's in blue. We're going to pull some of that blue into that fin. Going back through, darkening these up some more. And I apologize if you're able to hear any construction in the background. It's one of the reasons I haven't been making a whole lot of, of edited videos lately until they're done with the house across the street from me. Um, it makes it very hard to 
record these videos. Now I'm using a bit of black and I don't want to go too heavy on this. This is going to be the areas where I'm kind of, I, I'm making it stand out a bit more, hyping up that, that contrast. I don't want to put this everywhere though. One, it would be flat. It wouldn't, you, you would lose the color saturation. But the other thing is here, this really pulls attention to the fin. If you look at the finished painting, the fin and the face where I've put the additional black. And so it works really well for just drawing attention in. Not that black would always do that. It's just that it's those areas that are such a high contrast. And then drying that. And it's me, so of course I'm gonna go back around the edges with some aqua. No one's surprised. I'm using the white pencil to clean up. And now where I said I don't wanna use white for everything, that is true. But here, when I add white on top, it's mixing in with the other colors. It's not going to come out true white. A little bit more detailing on those shadows. And we are done. There is a finished painting. Again, if you want to follow along with this in the two and a half hour version, head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash That link will be in the video description. Okay, little guy, welcome to your new home. You have to come out of the cup though. I know you see all of the fruit flies around, not flu fruit flies. I hadn't put those in yet. The fungus gnats. See, he's trying to get to them. You can't eat them through the cup. You have to come out. So close, but not quite. And you can't totally tell in this photo, but he is the size of my thumbnail. He is so, so tiny. So now I have to braid fruit flies to feed him so that they're tiny enough. Previous frogs, I just, I used to have a white tree frog and you feed him crickets. Yeah, he is smaller than a cricket. So fruit flies, it is or wingless fruit flies. As Joseph Fincham says, fruit walks. Come on out. You can't stay in there forever. I mean, I guess you could, but you're kind of boring. Come on out. Here, I'll miss the tank. Maybe you'll like that better. I mean, it already has like 95% humidity, 100% might be more appealing to you. And now we fogged up the glass and can't see you very well. I thought this through, as you can tell. Nope, that didn't make a difference. Let's take out the moss. There we go, moss is out. Now he can see all the better hiding places. Here he comes. I really wish the glass wasn't all fogged up with the water I just sprayed. How adorable is he? I mean, you can't see him. You can just see the movement, but you know, there he is into his new house. And into his favorite hiding place. Well, one of the two favorite hiding places he has since found. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you maybe to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. YouTube stopped emailing notifications to people though, so you may just have to come back to the channel and check that out. But if you did hit subscribe and the notifications, that should in theory make it easier to find my stuff.